Well, God bless you, YouTube. I hope you're having a wonderful night. Uh, this is Pastor Burgess, and uh, this is part two on my message, uh, Minefield, Mines, Barbed Wire, and Booby Traps, a spiritual warfare message about uh, strongholds, bondages, and curses. And um, and I want to get into this um, where I left off, and we were at bar Barbed Wire Bondages, and how did this stuff get here? <clears throat> so if you look at what it is, you will know how it got there and how to keep away from it in the future. To put it simply, it is a bondage or a yoke. Bondage is the is in the sense used here is something to which you have committed yourself until uh, until you have become its slave. Consider drinking alcohol as an example. At some time you you started uh, drinking, you found early in the in the game that you could quit without a problem, but you didn't. After a while, your friends kindly suggested that you were drinking too much. You, your reply was, I can quit any time I want. Isn't that how, as sinners, we think that we can play with sin a little bit and just quit it any time we want? Well, that's horrible, people. We can't think that way because sin will entangle us. Sin will, will ensnare us. And, and, you know, and God doesn't want that for you. God wants you to walk in victory. God wants you to walk in power and anointing. Amen. So let's not fall into these entanglements and these ensnarements. Let's know our enemy and let's defeat him. Amen. And like I said in the last sermon, our, our enemy isn't people, the flesh, but it's a spiritual enemy. It's the devil. Amen. So let's attack the devil and not people. Praise God. And let's not get mad at God either. That, that doesn't benefit any, any, anything either. So we think we can quit sin anytime we want. But like this person said, they, we, we, we played with alcohol for a little while. We thought we could quit any time we want. Now the doctor's saying that uh, if we don't quit uh, to save our health, we could possibly die. Uh, your job is in jeopardy. You could lose your job. Your, your spouse is threatening she's going to leave. Uh, you have tried to quit and you can't. Um, so you're entangled. You're in bondage. You're enslaved uh, to this alcohol. It's, you've become uh, uh, yoked to it. Amen. And God doesn't want that. How do I get clear of it? Removing bondages. Mm, glad you guys asked. Amen. There is one prime requisite for breaking a bondage. You or the person in bondage must truly want to rid of it, to be rid of it. Enough not to invite it back. Confess your problem and that you want to be free of it. And renounce it as for the mechanics of breaking a bondage. Ask God for a plan to break the particular bondage. Pray and fast if necessary until he gives you a plan. Follow it exactly in the bondage. And the bondage will be broken. The Lord has graciously given us the tools to break and clear away all the barbed wire entanglements or bondages. Barbed wire removal and equipment. Amen. Some of these methods um, I, I spoke about in my other sermons. So you can go check that out. Um, so there's eight different methods of removing bondages. And they're presented here. Um, the use of miracles, fasting, Jesus' name, the anointing, the yoke of Jesus. Uh, uh, um, in addition, we have added uh, the kinsman, or I've added the kinsman redeemer, uh, binding and loosing the power of agreement. As in all cases, ask the Lord what to do. So in Leviticus 26, 13, God told his people in regards to miracle, I, miracles, I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, and that ye should not be their bondsmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and have made you go upright. We are his people, just as much as they were and God still will still break a bondage with a, with a miracle as he wills. Ask him to do so, amen? Fasting. So, um, so it is not this, is it not the, the fast, this fast, that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Isaiah 58, 6 says that. The key lies in this phrase, in the phrase, and that ye break every yoke. The biblical context is that you should break the yokes you have placed on others in order that God will honor your fast. The same thing applies to the yokes that you have placed on your life. We can look at it another way. Bondages are a result of lack of discipline. If you can discipline, if, if you can discipline yourself to control your appetite for food, you can discipline yourself to con uh, control your appetite uh, for causing the bondages in your life. Then God can enter and deal with the bondages if God... If God directs a fast to break the yoke, fast and see the bondage removed. Amen? Jesus' name. So I've already discussed the use of Jesus' name in uh, spiritual warfare, and now we have, uh, uh, have, have another use. Once you have been set free from the uh, yoke of bondage, the authority of Jesus' name will keep you free. Stand fast thereof.
are therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. We're free, amen, people. We're free. As a child of God, you are free. You should not be walking in sin perpetually. We fall into it time and time again, but but we should not be, be dominated by it. We should not be living in it, amen. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage, according to Galatians 5.1. The liberty in which Christ hath made me free, and I will not become entangled with the yoke of bondage. Again, we have already shown that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, according to Philippians 2.9. We may also have life through Jesus' name. Believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God, and that, that believing you might have life through his name. Amen? Believe on Jesus and have life through his name. Amen, people. This is the only way we'll find life. Amen? Anointing. There is an anointing which comes from praying in the Spirit, which will break the yoke from a person's neck and enable him or her to live free of bondage. And it shall come to pass in that day that the, his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulders and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen, people. Oh, the anointing comes in and destroys that sin, that bondage in our life. Amen. Thank God for that, people. You can be free. You can walk in victory and power and anointing and know that you have... Have the Holy Spirit living in you to empower you. Amen. This is yet another reason to pray in the Spirit. Uh, yo the yoke of Jesus. Uh, in Matthew uh, 11, 29 to 30, Jesus commands us, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. See, people, we look into things of the world, we won't find rest. But I can tell you, when you come to Jesus, you'll get rest, people. He says, For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Notice the phrase here, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Jesus is saying to us that if we are yoked to him, we will have rest in our souls. Oh man, there is no rest for the wicked people. But when you're with Jesus, when you're walking next to Jesus, you got rest. Amen. You got joy and you got peace and you got comfort. Amen. And you can attack all, you can overcome and, and attack the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. When we take his yoke upon us, and learn of him. His burden becomes ours, and his yoke is easy, and his burden is light. If you yoke yourself to Jesus, you need never fear the bondages of sin. We have a kinsman redeemer. In the Mosaic law, if a, Hebrew land, if a Hebrew had to sell himself into bondage, he had a way of being redeemed. Leviticus 25, 47 to 50 states this. The redemption could be either, either come by his own hand, if he had the finances, or by a kinsman redeemer. We have only one account in the Bible of a kinsman redeemer fulfilling his obligations as that of is is that is of Boaz in the book of Ruth. He played the role of a kinsman redeemer with complete tact, compassion, love, justice, and thoroughness. We have just such a kinsman redeemer in, in Jesus, amen. And he will redeem us from, from our bondage if we call upon him. If we call upon him. This is important. It takes us calling upon him. It says in Romans 10, 13, it says here, uh, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, or the Lord shall be saved. Amen. We have the binding and loosing as directed by the Lord. Binding and loosing can be used in breaking bondages. If this is the case, the Lord will show you what to bind and what to loose. Binding and loosing. Amen. The power of agreement. If the Lord directs agreement, may be used as a weapon for breaking bondages and removing yokes. This is the one reason it is important to have a buddy or a prayer partner. We have our, um, So... Let's go here to booby traps and curses. You never thought there would be booby traps and spiritual warfare. Well, amen, people, there is. We've got to know the devil's, uh, the devil's tricks and the devil's, uh, his traps, amen. Well, there are. The traps are just as deadly as the name, as the name implies, and they are traps more to the point. They are there, and they don't, they don't know they are. If you are fighting the someone for someone else, that person probably doesn't know they're, they're there either. If a booby trap can harm you, and you don't know it is there, what can you do? Don't give up. You can get rid of the booby trap and, and be free of it, amen? You can get rid of that curse and be free of it and walk in victory, amen? How do I know there are booby traps here? Hmm. You have two methods uh, uh, of determining it, if booby traps are present. The first one is uh, look for the telltale symptoms of the booby trap. The second is go to the someone who knows all about the booby trap. God, amen. In this process, you will again find the presence of your buddy. It's good to have a, a, a brother you can pray with. At your side, a lifesaver. If there are signs of curses, what are they? First, look for reoccurring calamity in the family involved. Look into the family history as best you can. In particular, look for the firstborn of each generation and see if he carries the undue portion of the burden. Don't be hasty. 
Be as thorough as you can without being obstru obstru obtrusive. Amen. And I like what Derek Prince says here. This is really good. He states that there were definite symptoms which may be observed of, of curses operating in the lives of individuals or families. Look for the following. Mental conditions of the individuals or family. Is there a recurrent theme of mental problems or, or breakdowns? Financial conditions. Are there financial problems even though the income appears plentiful? A facade, a facade of apparent affluence can hide some unpleasant realities. Uh, personal accident accident evidence um is a person or the whole family accident prone spiritual condition are there there persistent spiritual problems in the person or the family are the family members difficult to bring to salvation death in the family how many are self-inflicted suicide or due to unnatural causes health records does illness seem to be a persistent problem in the person or family family relations is the family is the family closely knit or falling apart is there a history of marriage failing failure uh, and family disintegration Mm. And I got this all out of the blessing or curse book of Brother Derek Prince. Birth problems is a miscarriage of loss uh, of, of small children, a continual sad story or a female uh, problem common. After going through this list, look again for the reoccurrent calamity. Did you find some of these symptoms? Now is the time is the time to start asking asking questions of God. Father, are there curses here? If so, what kind of curses are they? At the point you are faced with their different answers from God, each is a different type of curse. What kind of booby traps are there? That indeed is a good question to ask because there, there are three and each requires its own unique technique to remove. Again, there, uh, they are all the consequences of human action. In other words, sin. Uh, sins and the three types of booby traps curses are spoken curses associated curses hereditary curses let us examine each type in order to mention so the spoken booby uh, booby traps or curses aren't all curses spoken they are in the movies and on tv no so soldier they are not even through the uh, entertainment media and in folklore would lure you to into believing so that is the that is the real world and our only source of information that is reliable and true is biblical, not secular. See, we can't go to the things of the world, people. We've got to look to the word of God. It will give us the answers we need. See, the, the world doesn't have our answers, people. God has our answers. Read your word. Get in the word of God uh, and, and ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand it. Amen. Because he is the teacher and he will teach you all things regarding the Father and the things of heaven and the things of the word of God. So how do spoken curses get there? So, so uh, because they are familiar, if from the wrong information sources, James discusses uh, the power of human tongue, of the human tongue and how difficult it is to control. The problem with an undisciplined and careless tongue is that it can, it can speak curses on its owner and others alike. Even when there is no deliberate intent to do so. A common example is the case of a person who only exhibits the worst behavior and only believes the worst of him or herself because of angry parents in his in his childhood or childhood repeatedly told him or her how rotten and worthless um, he or she was. A typical case is a former is a former um, associate of mine. Um, this is Joe. This is Derek Prince, who who was who we will not name. This man performed with brilliant, um, performed with brilliant and cre uh, brilliance and creativity on his job. However, in his own eyes and those of his employers, he was credited with being dull and insensitive. In spite of physical evidence to the contrary, his college academic record from the time he has a he he has a freshman, he has a freshman until. He had received a PhD at one of the most prestigious universities in the in its in this country. It was a straight A. What happened to him? As a child and as a teenager, his father would speak out angrily. Every time he and the father made a mistake, this is stupid. That's just the way uh, he would do it. By doing this, he cursed his son. Be before you criticize that father, ask yourself honestly if you have ever spoken such things about yourself or someone else. Uh, when you or they offended you, yourself or someone, when when they offended you, or the, or, it is equally obvi obvious that spoken curses can come about because of deliberate acts of, 
or because of carelessness. Whatever the reason they heard and must be dealt with. Amen, people? We've got to deal with these things. How do we know there are spoken curses? Amen? When there are, spoke, when, when there are problems in people's lives, sooner or later they manifest themselves. If with the problem you recognize symptoms of curses, you, you need to determine if, the, if curses are there. The gift of the Spirit to be discussed, um, and I will be discussing in a later sermon, um, uh, may, may be identified as discernment, the word of knowledge, or by prophecy. As always, I will be doing a video on this. Um, you must verify that, that uh, what has been revealed by testing the Spirit, some people or family or families may be aware of curses that have been spoken against them. That information must also be verified by testing the spirits. Whatever the reason for suspecting the presence of a curse, you must ask God and test the spirits for any answer you receive. Always ask the Lord what kind of curse is there and test the spirits. Amen? This is important. What do we do to get rid of the spoken booby trap, the curse? Okay, so we have told... Um, Okay, so we got to prepare ourselves, amen? Being prepared, ask God what to do. Test the spirits and obey. For a, spoken, uh, for a spoken curse, the procedure will usually include the following. Identify the curse. One, renounce and reject it over everyone or, or, or things involved. Two, declare it, or three, declare it broken, null, and void. Determine by asking God who has spoken the curse. Four, and then five is forgive the person's responsibility or forgive the person responsible. Amen. Ask God to remove the consequences of the curse. Ask God to release the blessings withheld by the curse. Ask God whether or not healing is needed and get healing ministered to those who need it. Amen. And, uh, and do all of the, the things above that I said in the name of Jesus, of course. Amen. So the booby, the, 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 the curse is gone. Now what? There are several obvious actions to be taken. The first is to determine if there are more spoken curses out there. A careless tongue can spread a lot of grief. Deal with it with any that are there. Ask the Lord if there are any other types of curses operative in this situation. If so, deal with them as, uh, um, as I have said. Finally, deal with the person speaking the curses if possible. Amen. What if you are the person? Learn to guard your tongue. Protect yourself. Don't speak things foolishly. Think about what you say. Have discernment for the things that you say. Amen. Renounce everything you say which could speak a curse into your life or someone else's life. Confess, repent, and ask for forgiveness. Amen, people. This is important. Ask for the consequences of your wrong speech to be removed. Associative, uh, associative curses. Uh, are, are insidious, insidious, particularly who's that are associative. So the whole entire chapter of the seventh book of the seventh chapter of the book of Joshua describes a cause and effect of the associative curse. In a particular case, one man sinned and brought accursed things in his tent. The entire nation of Israel suffered as a consequence. The same sort of thing still happens today and must be treated as done in Joshua. How do we detect an associative uh, curse? Uh, um, um, realizing something had gone drastically wrong when the defeat of Israel occurred at Ai, Joshua sought the Lord and, and received the answer that an accursed thing had been brought into the camp of Israel. The Lord also revealed what the accursed thing was and what to do about it. In Joshua 7, the offender was executed and burned along with his entire family and the accursed thing itself. Obviously, we cannot ex execute and burn someone who has brought in a cursed thing into our house. However, we can repent, confess, and ask God for forgiveness. Amen. This is important, people. We've got to do that. We can also destroy and burn the accused thing, or cursed thing. The, step, the steps to follow in eliminating an associative curse is, are as follows. Ask the Lord if there is an associative curse present. Ask the Lord what the accursed thing is. And ask the Lord who brought the accursed thing into your life. Destroy the accursed thing and burn it if possible. Have the person responsible for it present. Confess, repent, and ask forgiveness for bringing it into your life. Bind and break the associative curse over your life. Ask the Lord to remove the consequences of the presence of the accursed thing. Ask the Lord to restore any blessings withheld because of the associative curse. So hereditary curses. You have been told by the Lord that there is a uh, there is a, there is a curse present in the situation you are dealing with, and that it is a hereditary curse. Can I diffuse it like a spoken or associative curse? No, unless the Lord specifically instructs you to do so. Each hereditary curse generally requires its own unique treatment to be disarmed. 
To understand how to deal with such booby traps, you need to understand how they got there. How did the booby trap get there? How did the booby trap get there? Amen. That can best be answered by looking at what they are and, and why they are there. It seems an unfair thing that curses are placed on seemingly innocent people with the result of endless misery. It may seem unfair, but it is just all we Christians are in, in a judge, judgment system, God's judgment system. It is detailed in the Mosaic Law, God's judgment system. In the time to do, okay, so re, uh, so I, I suggest you read Deuteronomy chapter twenty nine and twenty eight, um, and twenty eight, and and also, uh, particularly chapter twenty eight. So let us look at the con, con, uh, condensed version of, of God's God's judgment uh, system out of the condensed Bible. If it, yes or no, no, this is just condensed. My bad. So, there is a penalty for sin, disobedience to God. The children suffer for the sins of their parents. All the children suffer, but the old, oldest suffer the most because he is the heir. The law requires an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. As an example, Abraham denied his oldest son, child Ishmael, I mean, his birthright. Esau, the firstborn of Isaac, lost his birthright. Isaac's heir, Jacob, had his eldest son, Reuben, lost his birthright. The Lord forgives sin, but does not with, withdraw the punishment. You can't stop the consequences of an action or a sin. This applies in both the Old Testament and the New. new uh, Numbers uh, 14, 18, and Romans 2, 9 through 11. Um, even the ground can be cursed by men walking the ground, uh, or men walking on it. Uh, sin is not a trivial matter. Uh, sin is not a trivial matter. Uh, the same principle holds true for God. Galatians 6, 7. Bo booby, uh, booby traps uh, don't come with without cause. Proverbs 26, 2. If you sin, you can expect judgment and you can watch your children suffer. That would seem to be a large incentive not to sin. From the above, it should be obvious now Now the, the cause of a booby trap or a curse is, is a consequence of God's judgment or someone's sin. People also can curse other people to a degree in judgment for a tra transgression, real or imagined. Mm, this, is, this, is, this is some powerful stuff, people. We must be aware of that. Who's responsible for the booby traps being here? Now you are on track. You need more information to break or release the curse? You can look into your family history and see when the symptoms started or occurring. If it is in the unknown past, you can still ask God and he will tell you as much as he requires you to know. Apply the eye for an eye principle and then what you, you know of the family history with as much information as you can muster. Ask God who is a responsible individual and what to do about it. Don't condemn. God forgave your sins and didn't he? You must be forgiving to those who sin against you, amen. So I want to kind of uh, uh, close this out. Um, I'd like to go a little further. Um, eh, why not? Can I get rid of these booby traps? You you have already been told that you can, amen. I told you you can, praise God. But you need to know why you can. That, is, that in turn will tell you how to get rid of them. Then we all can breathe easier, amen. Hallelujah. So the basic principles for removing booby traps are this. Um, uh, he he allowed his blood to be shed that we may be forgiven. He took our punishment for us. Um, he allowed his body to be injured so we may may be healed. He suffered poverty that we might be be rich or have provision. He took Adam's self exaltation on himself and was humiliated, tortured, died on a cross. He suffered in our place. Amen. He took our curse upon himself, being born of a man. He fell heir to all the curses on mankind because of his absolute obedience and suffering for the laws he did not break. God was satisfied and the law was perfectly fulfilled. Oh, why? Oh, that's a good question. So the blessings may come according to Galatians 3.14. And it says this, uh, um, or, or says in this word blessing, it says, uh, is used in the Bible approximately three times as frequently as the word curse. God is more um, is more interested in blessing us than cursing us, neutralizing the booby traps or breaking curses. Um, for convenience, this has been broken into uh, I've broken this into seven steps. Get yourself into a proper condition with it. So, God, commit your entire effort to God in faith. Father, I commit, confess your faith. Father, I believe your word and and know you will. Do this. Be obedient to the Lord and, and obey what uh, he tells you to do. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the problems to you through the gifts of the Spirit and for the name of the, the sin that caused the, the curse. Confess, repent, ask for forgiveness if it's hereditary or whatever the curse is. Uh, ask the Lord if there are any spirits or any demonic uh, forces to be dealt with as a result of the curse or 
curses if there are, deal with them and as he directs you to. And do not attempt to break curses unless you have made the following preparations. Have have, have with you a competent prayer partner or one that's walked with God that is, has got a, a, a good prayer, uh, you know, a, a track of good prayer history that they've prayed with a lot of people and, they, and they've, you've seen positive fruit out of it and they're living a holy and righteous life. Um, and you've got to have a person that has prayed and determined that there are curses, of course, and then draw a family tree and list on it all the known problems of the family. Um, the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, will provide any unknown information. Um, so uh, let me do a kind of a sample prayer for you guys that you can pray and then I'll kind of finish this up. Father, in the behalf of ancestor of the ancestor, whoever it is, and other members of the, the family that may have committed any sins contributing to the curse, I confess the, the name of the person in the name of Jesus. I repent of this sin or these sins or his or her or their behalf and ask the father to forgive him her their them or they them um and and um after this prayer has been prayed it is important to deal with any spirits which may have attacked themselves to the family involved because of weakness caused by the curse so ask the lord ask the lord if any spirits have attached themselves to the family because of the curse and if so ask the lord what they are the list, um, what to do and list them, of course, um, as you see fit. Um, clean up the entire mind. Um, as you clean up the minefield, remember that there will probably be hurt or wounded people that require healing. Mm. So, removing stronghold bondage or curses. Step one, ask God what the problem you are facing is. Step two, ask God for a plan to correct the problem. And step three, test the spirits. Step four, follow the plan given in detail. Well, God bless each and every one of you. I hope this message was a blessing to you guys. I know I rushed through a bunch of it, but I hope it was a it was a blessing to you. And I, uh, uh, it's really been on my heart. And I just believe uh, that it's that we need to know how to walk in, in spiritual warfare, and and we need to know how to fight properly. And God wants to give us power. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, as I humbly come to you tonight, God, I just thank you for this word, and I just ask that you fill each and every person watching this video with your Holy Spirit. Meet and answer every need of each family and each life. God, I ask, Lord, that you would just begin to strengthen and fill them, Lord, and use them in mighty ways. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, God bless each and every one of you, and this is Pastor Burgess. It's been an honor speaking with you. You guys have a wonderful night. God bless.